morning, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to EUCC Facebook Live. My name is Chris Van Note, and I am filling in for Pastor Jeff while he is out of town today. Um, safe travels, Pastor Jeff. Um, some of you out there know me, and I may be new to others, but no matter which you are, I hope that you are well on this Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and read my scripture for today. My scripture is Luke 15, chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, the parable of the lost sheep. Yeah, I know. Of course, it'd be animal related. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need not repentance."
Okay. So the sermon today, of course, it's going to have some animals in there, and it's okay. But animals play a big part in our life, and I always thought they were a gift from God anyway. <clears throat> I believe that God speaks to us through our daily life events, trials, and tribulations. I will admit that it's easier to turn to God in prayer when we're in need. We sometimes forget to thank him for all that he does for us. When we turn to God only in times of need, it's easy to forget about being thankful. Once we have achieved what we have prayed so hard for, I'm sure everyone out there can relate to this at one point in time. It's easier to ask for what we want sometimes not be as thankful for what we have. I like to sit in the silence and listen to my still-speaking God, and when that doesn't work because I'm too busy, the one thing I can count on is him tapping me on my shoulder to get my attention. Sometimes he wears me out with that. With all the unsettledness in the world and in our lives these days, God is still speaking to us. He's begging for us to listen and grow in his love, mercy, and grace. Jesus sacrificed his life for ours, so sitting still, listening, learning, doesn't seem to be too much to ask for, or so I feel. I was listening to Amazing Grace the other day, and in the lyrics, I found what I needed to preach about today. And I'm going to read this, because... You sure don't want me singing it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. That was one of my grandfather's favorite songs, and it was played at his funeral, and if I'm not mistaken, it was played at my grandmother's funeral as well, so... Song always has a special place in my heart. I want to share with you a real life lost and found story. Because it's what my, my sermon is about lost and found. Recently, a small dog named Marshall escaped from his home, his safe place, the only place he knew. Once he ventured out of his yard, into the streets, up the hill, he found himself in unfamiliar territory. I'm sure if you think about it, we can all kind of relate to this. Nothing looked familiar and nothing sounded familiar. A scared small dog out there alone in a big old world of cars, trees, fields, and noises he had never heard before. Marshall was officially lost. I can only imagine the fear Marshall was feeling. The hot weather left him thirsty, hungry, seeking shelter. I forgot to mention the part where not only is this a small dog, but it is a small, spoiled dog. So that even just makes this more intense for Marshall. As the call from a desperate dog mom came across the phone lines, Facebook, and all other means, it was amazing watching a community come together to search for a dog most people had never even met. At this particular point in time, Marshall was our lost sheep. Everyone was determined to find him, bring him home. We wanted to find him before the coyotes did. Days went by, and there were a few sightings, but no luck in finding Marshall. And let me tell you, it wasn't for lack of trying. We, we stomped through fields, and yeah, some, and it was hot. God, it was hot. I mean, and we had things to drink, you know. Poor Marshall's out there, and he didn't know where his next drink was coming from. Days went by, and there were a few sightings, but no luck finding Marshall. When a dog escapes, they go into what they know is fight-or-flight mode. They just try to outrun the fear. Hmm. 
I can relate to that. I've tried to outrun my fear before. As many people searched and prayed for Marshall's safe return, it was up to Marshall to give up and allow someone to capture him. At one point, my dog Layla and I just sat in the field and prayed. We sat in the silence, we sat in the shade, and we just prayed. The next day, our lost sheep was found and returned home, stinky, belly rubbed raw from the brush, and hungry. All was well in the world of Marshall. He had nothing to fear anymore because he was home. He was safe. He was that one of 99 sheep that people took the time and the energy and the interest to help go find. The other side of this story is Marshall's little person. There's nothing sweeter than a a boy and his dog. Marshall's little person loved his dog so much and was experiencing a sadness that he, he as well had never felt before. He'd never lost his dog before. He'd never not had his dog before. And this was new to him. And it was scary for Marshall's little person. But mom had to leave her little person, whom she knew was safe, like the 99 other sheep, to go look for Marshall, her one lost sheep. Isn't that what Jesus would do? My response on Facebook when it was announced that Marshall was home with his little person, God is good. Marshall made it home safely. Like I said, just a little little road rash from the, the brush that was, I'm sure, taller than little Marshall. But all was good. Marshall was home. His little person was happy, and mom had her flock back where it belonged. The lost and found sheep parable can be related to so many of life's lessons. Once I started thinking about it, I found it a bit overwhelming. If anyone here at church knows me, I'm notorious for losing my coffee cup. We need a lost and found for just my coffee cup. When there's a drug bust announced on Facebook or in the newspaper, so many start condemning the people arrested. They are our lost sheep. And in this story, the coyote is the drug. Isn't it safe to assume these people are lost and maybe we should be seeking ways to help them so they can find joy in being found? Ah, the joy of finding Marshall. Saying a prayer for people in need is a start. I know when it comes to animals and people, we may not be able to save them all. But shouldn't we try? Just like the animal instinct to fight or flight from danger, the attic responds the same way. The further they run from safety, the harder it is for them to be found. If only a greater community could come together and save a lost sheep to addiction. Sit with an addict. Eat with them. Listen to them. In a perfect world, we would not have a need for a lost and found if everyone was saved by the grace of God. But as we all know, this is not a perfect world. But we can try and make our little corner of the world quieter by listening and responding to a still speaking God. In my next story, the coyote is homelessness. If any of you are familiar with Mr. Jerry, a homeless man that we took off the streets, 
moved into an apartment, he too could fall into that lost and found parable. He wandered the streets searching for food and shelter. He was lost. He was lost like Marshall. People in the community were taking him food to keep him from going hungry. A lot of people that would run into Mr. Jerry were scared of him. He had a bit of a gruff side. He was not very approachable at all. But after you sat with him, and you talked with him, and you listened to him, and you ate with him, you found out there was a whole lot more to Mr. Jerry than just what you could see with your eyes. Mr. Jerry had a huge heart, and he loved people, and he was a good man, and he deserved better. After moving Mr. Jerry into his own apartment, he began to thrive. Someone searched for him, lent a helping hand, allowed him to grow. And did he ever grow in that apartment? He became very independent. He had to relearn social skills, I want to say. How to interact with people he didn't know, living in an apartment complex. But he done it. And, he, and, and I got to say, Mr. Jerry done it well. He never worried about food or shelter after that. Mr. Jerry was found until he went to be with Jesus. Mr. Jerry passed away in his apartment. Not a ditch, not a homeless shelter. He didn't end up a missing person because no one knew where his body was. Mr. Jerry passed in his own apartment because he was one lost sheep that someone never gave up on. We all get lost along the way too, wherever your life is heading. My life was lost, even though I didn't know it, or maybe just too proud to admit it. Yeah, I'm going with the too proud to admit it part. Until one day while walking into Walmart, Joe Soderl invited me to church. Not just any church, this church. A church that did not judge me and accepted me for who I am. I thought my life was good, I had it under control, until I realized there is so much more to living life than, well, just living it. The more I got involved with EUCC, the more my eyes were open to the needs of our community. I found a purpose and a way to return all the gifts that God has blessed me with to give back. Yes, I too was lost, but now I am found. Someone in this church reached out to me and brought me home. Brought me home to a church that loans out medical equipment, that assists people when they're in need, that truly does try to build up this community and not turn its back on it. I love my church. And when I say my church, I'm okay calling it my church. Lost does not mean lost forever. Jesus sets out to save the one lost sheep. How can we, as a group of believers, save one lost sheep or one lost soul? Can we start with a dialogue that consists of compassion and empathy? The definition of compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortune of others. I'm going to read that one more time. 
the definition of compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the suffering or misfortune of others. The definition of empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. We are blessed that Jesus, Jesus shows us all compassion and empathy through forgiveness. If you have someone in your life that is lost, don't give up on them. Hold on to hope and don't let go. Marshall, addicts, Mr. Jerry, and myself, we were all lost, and by the grace of God, we were found. So if you're sitting out there today, and you know of someone that could really use a helping hand, Maybe they need to be lifted up. They need to be encouraged. Don't be afraid to be the one person that does that for them. No matter how scary they might be to approach, there's still a lost sheep in there. And it is our job as children of God, to bring all of our sheep home. Amen.
Before I give my closing prayer, John Lennon's song, Imagine, was always one of my favorites. So let's try to imagine a world where we don't need a lost and found, where everyone is found. If you know someone that's lost, reach out to them. Don't give up. Because Jesus never gave up on us. He's still here for us. He still listens to us. He still speaks with us. I just can't say it enough. The lost and found needs to be a thing of the past. In a perfect world, we would all be found. No one would be lost. Let's pray for those that are lost. There's a lot of people out there that are lost, facing tough decisions, just with everyday life, decisions that need to be made. And today, we're going to pray for those people. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I come to you in prayer today, asking you to be with all your sheep, the lost, the found, the scared, the safe, the unhealthy, the healthy, let us all, as children of God, remember the sacrifices you made for us. Help us to be strong and not do the easy thing and just give up on someone. There's no easy decisions. A lot of tough decisions out there. And they weigh heavy on our hearts. Lord, I ask that you give the sheep that are found the strength to help those that are lost. I ask that you give strength to the sheep out there that are facing tough decisions to turn to you in prayer. Sit still. Listen to you for we know you're still speaking. And help us all to do the right thing by you. In the name of, name of Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen.